Gatwick, Andy's search of person has identified the cause of the positive cocaine hit. The man has confessed to using cocaine whilst in Spain. So you say the reason for the, the high reading that we got here was because you had a couple of lines of coke yesterday? Oh, OK. Yeah? Is that correct? Yeah. Yeah, and it's quite high. You use it quite regularly? No, not very much, actually. Yeah. Not very much. Having confessed to using cocaine abroad, the man's now trying to avoid trouble. Came up with a very high reading for cocaine. When I put that to him, just inside the room there, why that would be, he said, well, he had a couple of lines of coke yesterday with his girlfriend, which would do the trick. So stripped him off, nothing there at all, and uh, gradually calmed down once he realised that that was what we were going to do. So, no guilt, yeah? Thank you. Welcome. Bye -bye. The high reading was from personal use, so a disappointed Andy has to let him go. So, nothing today, maybe next time. Custom Ship Searcher has tracked a yacht sailing towards the southwest coast of England. Within the 12 mile limit, any vessel is a potential smuggler, and customs officers have the power to board and search. This is the six miles. You can see that the, the target vessel that we're interested in is just off the six mile limit, so he's well within the 12. What's using the plate? The cutter launches the high-speed rib team from the stern, giving the yacht no time to hide any goods on board or jettison any drugs into the sea. The boarding team don't need the skipper's permission, but he seems unaware of their powers. Customs, sir, we're just going to pop on board for a second. Come on board when I get back to port. When we get back to port, we've actually got to come on board now, sir. Pardon? We're coming on board now, sir. How long have you been over in the Sillies? Uh, two days. Two days. I can hear the rib crew saying there they're going to take some uh, swabs on board the vessel, some iron track swabs, and then they're going to bring them back to the cutter and we can test to see if there's any uh, traces of narcotics or explosives on the yacht. To avoid upsetting innocent sailors as much as possible, the drug swabs quickly identify any wrongdoing. The man's initial attitude may be a good sign of a smuggler, but the swabs will be the ultimate test. <coughs> if he's got anything on his hands, that will have moved onto the tiller. Nothing there. The swabs are negative, and there's uh, no trace of any drugs on that particular boat. All negative. Nice, uh, clean yacht. Fair dues. Back to the boys back in there. Quickly exonerating the innocent is as important as arresting the guilty and this sailor is free to continue his journey. And after the 12-hour shift, the cutter searcher returns to port. <laughs> Meanwhile in Gatwick, police have arrested a man as he stepped off a flight from the Caribbean. His problems get worse when the officers bring him through customs. He's dressed very smartly. Why is he wearing a suit? Was he sitting in... Economy is he, is he flying Virgin Upper Class? Why is wearing, why did he wear a suit? No one else in the flight yeah. is wearing a suit. But, uh, we'll find out, we'll ask him a few questions. Well, what's happened is that the police had warrants, outstanding warrants for this man. And as soon as he came off the plane, they arrested him at that stage. And uh, they brought him up here. And as the flight is one which has uh, uh, brought previous jobs to us, shall we say, uh, they asked us if we wanted to have a look through his luggage. And the obvious thing is that given the risk of drugs coming in from there, we said yes. So we've gone through the luggage and what we want to do now is just to make sure he's got no drugs on his person. Many smugglers try hard to look innocent and Chris asks permission to do a body search. He's arrived on a flight from Montego Bay. Yeah. And as you can see, he's probably the most smartly dressed guy on the flight, dressed in a suit, which is essentially a holiday destination. It seems as though he's got various layers on as well. Yeah. So I just want to rub him down, make sure there's nothing under all those layers. That's fine, Chris. Yeah, 8.15. Yeah, well, Thank you. Cheers. Thanks very much. 
Okay, if you come this way. Do you want to come way. out with us as well? Stay with him. Well, if you can follow us. Okay. Catching drug smugglers is a daily occurrence at Gatwick, and officers find packages in a variety of places. The strip search is as uninvasive as possible, but it's an uncomfortable experience, especially when Jeff discovers the initial reason for the man's arrest. Uh, he's actually wanted for a driving offence, <laughs> but, <laughs> you know, we have to make sure 100% certain. We did a quick search and nothing was found, so uh, we've handed him back to the police. He's been uh, re-arrested and uh, taken back down to the uh, station. This man isn't a smuggler <laughs> and leaves cooperatively with the police. Meanwhile, in Bristol, three passengers have been caught with 87 kilos of tobacco, but they're not going quietly. You have treated us really badly, really, really badly, like we've done something wrong. Until you're prepared to speak to me in a well, proper manner, I won't to deal with you. It's the biggest haul the team have seen in years, but the man is adamant it's not being brought in to sell on the black market. Anne's decided to interview the man to see if he's telling the truth. If not, the £11,000 worth of tobacco will all be seized and destroyed. How much do you smoke a week, on average? Uh, two, three packs a day, so... Uh, two or three 50-gram packs? Yeah, generally two. OK. So. How many cigarettes do you tend to make from one 50-gram pack of tobacco? What could you get? Very often, no. Okay. At one fifty gram pint, on a good day, you get twenty out of it. <laughs> okay, sorry. Um, he would expect those goods to last him nine to ten months. All right, give him the benefit of the doubt. 30, 30 kilos are for him. Yeah. That's six hundred pouches, and he reckons ten months. Yeah. Definitely not longer than a year. Because he bought the same amount last year. And that means he's it. going to be smoking eight and a half pouches a week. Totally and utterly he's, ridiculous. Oh, he says he smokes two pouches a day. Two to three pouches a day. A day? <laughs> the only thing I haven't asked yet is about rolling. Because mm -hmm. are we allowed to ask about? Mm -hmm. Are we? What do you mean? Going to roll what? Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to ask you to roll one of these for oh, me. Really? I'm yeah. not playing any silly games. Well, you've, I, you've said that you can listen, roll. No, I've been very good. I've played the game. Right? Yeah, you've but asked I'm not asking. Questions. You've asked. And if you really think at 65 years old, I haven't smoked all my life, I'm now going to play a silly game. I'm asking you to roll one cigarette. No way. I'm not being silly. No way. That's insulting. The two other passengers have had their goods seized. And now the moment of truth. Anne has to decide if the angry passenger gets to keep his tobacco, and he's not going to be happy. I've looked over what has been said today, and um, you failed to satisfy me that the tobacco is for your own use Good. for the following reasons. I'll give you the reasons. One, uh, the excessive quantity is actually nine times over the guideline of what you are supposed to bring in from an... Not, but what, not when I'm supposed to smoke, yeah, fine. When you say guideline, yeah, there is a guideline yeah, of three thousand. It's a guideline. Yeah, but it's still nine. Is, I'm giving you my. I'm not going to argue about it. Okay, I'm giving you my reasons. Um, consumption, three pouches a day is grossly oh, there excessive. You are, right. Yeah. Okay. Go on. Right. You're going to tell me what. To you've smoke got. Now. You've got no smoking paraphernalia at all. That's correct. You <laughs> refuse to roll a cigarette correct. for no reason. Correct. Um, well, not for no reason. I made it clear It's not to you credible. That I'm not going to demonstrate. Okay, fine. You refuse to. Drink a cup of tea. You refuse. I didn't or ask you to drink a cup of tea. No, I'm telling you that. You asked me to do something just as benign. Look, can you just right. listen, just please? Just sign it, please, and we can get to the court. Right. It's not credible to import this quantity when travelling yeah, again yeah, yeah. in three weeks. Yeah, yeah. Inconsistencies in your account. Travelling you actually said... Inconsistencies in my yeah. account? Just let me finish, yeah, go right? On, let's hear it. You actually said that on the same flight, your um, son and a female friend of his travelled, whereas your wife told Mr Hanlon that nobody else that no. you knew travelled. That is the point. You, that is the point. if we were travelling on We're not going to... When you were being questioned. Did they ask you if you're travelling on our own? Yeah. yeah, well, we are. Well, you're not because you know other... You, well, no, I'm, so, I'm so another you lady I was sitting beside. So are you suggesting that um, Mrs...
didn't know that her own son was no, also no, on I'm the flight. No, no, what I'm saying to you is, we are travelling on our own. That's what my wife said. Anyway, get to it, It's Come also on. not credible to get only 20, or 30 or even 40 cigarettes from a 50-gram pouch of tobacco. Right there. Generally, you would get at least 80 to 100 cigarettes out of Not if you roll them in a box. What, so are you suggesting yeah. that you roll oh, them? I'm not suggesting anything. Let's right. go to court and have my solicitor. OK, if you, if you could sign. <laughs> Look, you and need to sign the date as well. Sign the date. You put the date. You don't Look, sign I'm not going to argue with you about put, no. sign. I'm just trying to get you to behave correctly. Um, I don't think I need you to teach me how to <laughs> do that. Somebody needs to teach you. I could say the same about you. Anne's ordeal is finally over. He was trying to intimidate me, I think, perhaps because he thought I was a girl, uh, like he was calling me little girl and stuff and waving his finger in my face. But that doesn't intimidate me. He was just nitpicking at things, really, because he knew that he hadn't got a leg to stand on. The passengers walk away empty-handed, having lost 87 kilos, which will now all be destroyed. <laughs> Angry man in Bristol made an official complaint about his treatment. Sell the goods illegally. Easier said than done. Right, these, these are your cigarettes, yeah? Yes. Okay. Yeah. And how many do you smoke? Both oh, hours? I smoke a few, a lot too much. She smokes a lot more than me. So how much do you smoke? Five hundred a week. Sorry? Five hundred a week. Five hundred a week. I smoke quite a few, but well, between how many is that a day then? 50 or 60 a day. 50 or 60 a day. Yeah. Do you, how many do you smoke? Like a, like a trooper. Have you been stopped uh, before? No, I haven't. No? Yeah, okay. we haven't been stopped. Who is he in here? What, what is he? Do you know what? I'm not. Yeah, we didn't have anything. No? No. Okay. All right, so. Are you a pilot? Are you a pilot? Oh, you've got fingers no, on I'm a, I'm a customs officer. Oh, oh. Right, Joe now needs to work out if he believes their story. She got open packets on him. Can't really get a lot of sense out of him. But she reckons she smokes 50, 60, and she possibly could. She already had one. Um, she's going again on Sunday, but I'm tempted to uh, well, the way everything's going, just to um, write down what it got and see what she brings in on Sunday. Yeah, Joe decides to let them go. Um, you want to put them in your bag? Put them in? Yeah. Yeah, I think so too. Sensing it's his lucky day, the passenger decides to try it on. God and Bart the Spirit, she could sell a little cheap. Oh, no, sorry. No? We're not allowed to do that. Hey? Hey? Filming, no, we can't, we can't do that. Hey, can't, can't you let us... <laughs> Hey, a couple of bottles of spirits, it's for, you know, for Christmas. <laughs> um, oh, they're getting the good day the spirit of things. OK. The lady will be searched again when she returns on Sunday. If she brings anything through next time she travels, then she won't be... She, she'll be losing that, basically. But I really doubt she, she will. Um, there it is. There. And at the end of it, I think they're quite happy. He was quite happy and quite a character. Um, even offered if, uh, for me to go round his house for a cup of tea one day, which is quite nice. In Dover, customs officers face a massive challenge sniffing out drug dealers from the thousands of trucks streaming across the channel 24 hours a day. At the end of the day, we are here first and foremost to stop drugs coming into the country. That's our primary role. If we get a smell of anything, We'll track it down until we either find it or we're happy that there's nothing there. Usually the intelligence hub picks out target vehicles based on a variety of profiles. But today Mark is literally following his nose. Let's port it again as well. He's picked up a suspicious scent and the Dutch truck must now be thoroughly searched. Um, and the other side when I was doing the outsides, um, I caught a whiff of what I thought was perhaps a herbal substance. I uh, don't want to say terms of drivers right behind you. Um, some kind of a possibly controlled drug. Yep. I think it's, it's strong enough to have a look yeah. in the vehicle. Yeah. And three of us have, have caught a whiff of it. Off, offload bay round there, and we want, we want to take part of your load off and have a look in the lorry, OK? Yeah, over there, yeah. Mark then spots something else that adds to his suspicions. 
I just noticed that uh, the tyres and some parts of it underneath are splattered with mud. It begs the question, has it been off-road somewhere? Has it been diverted for a purpose? The pallet he's getting off now is the one that was nearest to the smell, if you like, of the front left-hand corner. I can't smell anything now, funnily enough, but uh, we'll, we'll have a look. The driver can claim compensation for any damage, but Mark thinks this truck needs this final test. Perhaps the smell of cannabis was coming from another vehicle, and Mark decides it's time to let this driver go. Yeah. Sprawdzono mi towar, naczepę przewiercono, prześwietlono, sprawdzono całe auto. I myślę, że wszystko jest ok. Że jest super. Jest dobrze. And as one job finishes, another ferry full of potential smugglers hits the docks. Another target vehicle coming in on the 1300 arrival from Dunkirk. It's all go sometimes. I did say Thursday was a busy day. <laughs> Officers in Gatwick are also investigating a possible Class A drug smuggler acting suspiciously at immigration control. As soon as she was starting to be questioned, she said she wants to go to the loo, so uh, she might have something concealed inside her or on her body she wants to get rid of. Morning. So you've come in from Nigeria. You live in Nigeria? You live here? Whereabouts do you live here? Waltham Abbey. Okay, what do you do here? Care assistant. Okay, so how long have you been in Nigeria for this trip? Two weeks. Is that a holiday, a business? Holiday. Okay, so seeing family, friends? Yeah, my family. Okay, this is all your baggage? Yes. And you packed it all yourself? Yes. Okay, you come into the Green Channel, nothing to declare. Do you understand what you're allowed to bring into the country? You realise there are other restrictions on coming into the country, things like drugs and firearms. Has anyone asked you to bring anything here? Has anyone forced you to bring anything here? OK, let's have a quick look, shall we? Thank you. Andy searches the bags. The passenger's still acting nervous, so he also swabs the bags for drugs. The bag tests positive for heroin. So this search will have to go further. The body language is quite good. I've had a hit of, uh, for heroin on the, uh, on the iron scan. I just want a quick rub down, just make sure she's not got anything. Okay, just before you go, I'd just like for a, a lady officer to make sure you have nothing on you. Okay, you have any problem with that? Oh, good, thank you. Hundreds of passengers a year are caught smuggling drugs through Gatwick. The body search will find out if this passenger is one of them. Back in Dover, the next target has been pulled by the specialist rummage team. It's an awkward load, exactly the sort of cover used by smugglers to conceal drugs and tobacco. I mean, it's just such a loose description, isn't it? I mean, it is. It's, it's a children's playground, isn't it, basically? Yeah. Yeah, the bags of balls, yeah. <laughs> oh, right. Yeah. It might take a while. It's all going to be handballed off, basically. I mean, I don't know whether they get a forklift in there and get some of the stuff, but... I mean, yeah, you, you see things like this now and again, but, but it's not the norm. I mean, it, I, I'm just guessing it's some sort of children's playground that's been out in Spain for the season and is being brought back. It is a good cover load, isn't it? I mean, it's very yeah. difficult to get over the top of and, and to see in amongst. After hours of offloading, the team finds some suspiciously heavy wooden boxes. Yeah. No. They've made it look like... They've made it look like the, the spongy steps, haven't they? It's extremely suspicious, so the team decide to drill the boxes. And, I mean, you saw, saw the load, how difficult it was to get in. They've managed to, to get themselves in there, identified these uh, packages. They drilled a hole, and inside there's some green plastic. I think it was in that one. It's 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 in that one. 
Stewart thinks the plastic packaging could indicate drugs. I would think that there'll be a large quantity of cannabis in there, there yeah, may be up to a ton. The driver is arrested while they work out what they've found. But it's a slow, methodical uh, process now. If the guy's arrested, there's no rush. After another two hours of careful unpacking, the moment of truth has arrived. It's just about to take the lid off. I think in the porn industry, this is the money shot, isn't it? It's a massive haul of what looks like cannabis. I can't smell anything. I'm guessing it's uh, cannabis resin in there. I can't. I can't smell it. Still can't get anything off it. I smell the plastic. Mm. All the boxes are full of bales of cannabis, which have apparently come from a special garden. The maker's manufacturer mark. It's, it's just there. It's come from that particular cannabis farm in Morocco, or wherever it is it's come from, and that they put their own stamp on it. And that's how it gets shipped out. The officers now want to know just how much they've seized from the smugglers. It's the biggest haul of cannabis at Dover for years. So I have 928 kilos, about. And the specialist <laughs> rummage team are delighted. 928 kilos is nearly a ton, so that's excellent. We've had a, we've had a bit of a lean period, actually, our team. We've gone... Uh, three months maybe without anything. We've had, we've had a few little cigarette seizures might have been on the way, but, but this is what we call a proper job, really. Still to come, officers get to the bottom of the suspected smuggler in Gatwick. Somebody's got a package shoved up the backside, then if you bend them over, you can either see the package or it'll come out. Coming up, officers get to the bottom of the suspected smuggler in Gatwick. And if I can get you to hold on to the side of the bench. Okay, and if you can pop your butter cheeks a little bit with your hands. In Gatwick, the female officers have arrived to search the woman whose bags tested positive for heroin. We do a rub down search for us, just make sure she got nothing on her. Customs sees over 400 kilos of heroin each year and officers in Gatwick regularly catch smugglers willing to go to great lengths to hide their packages. If you're gonna do it, you might as well be thorough. And um, the, the whole bending over squatting thing, if somebody's got a package shoved up the backside, then if you bend them over uh, and squat, then unfortunately you can either see the package or it'll come out, generally. Okay, and what you need to do is squat down for me so I can check that you haven't got anything inserted in any of your offices, okay? So you'll need to squat down for me, turn around, bend over and put your buttock cheeks for me as well. But as I said, you won't be touched at any time, so there's no need to worry about that. And if I can get you to hold on to the side of the bench, okay? And if you can put your buttock cheeks a little bit with your hands, put your buttock cheeks. That's fine, okay? And if you can just turn around for me and squat down for me as well. So I can... Okay, that's fine. The search finds nothing, but the passenger is surprisingly understanding of her treatment. It's good, because it makes you be scared to do such things. I came to this country just to make a living for me and my children and my family, that's it. I do my work, I can work 7, 24, 7. I don't want to just take quick money or anything. I believe in my Andrew work. What I can do with my hands to get money, I know that. Today is the start of a two-week tour of duty for the customs officers aboard Customs Cutter Searcher. The intelligence hub has identified a ship heading to the Cornish port of Foy from Turkey, the gateway to Europe for heroin from the opium poppy countries of Asia. She's Turkish with 15 Turkish crew on board. Obviously, with a Turkish ship, we've got the possibility um, of heroin being on board the ship. There's also a good chance that there'll be some cigarette smuggling from Romania because LMMs are extremely cheap. The race is now on to beat the ship into Foy, so the officers track the vessel into port. It may not be expected, so I doubt very much it's expected. Catching smugglers off guard is vital to prevent any drugs or tobacco being thrown overboard before it can be seized. It's okay. Okay, okay, if we come in, Captain. 
Have you a crew declaration? Yes. A stores declaration and also a ship's declaration, Captain. The captain appears to run a tight ship, but sometimes the opportunity for the crew to make extra money on the side can't be resisted. My crew will be checking the vessel now, and if there's any problems at all, I'll, I'll come and have a, a word with you. I'm not expecting any, so uh, that's okay. You, you've had no problems with drugs or anything with the crew? No, no, no. I should. Are you sure that's okay? Yeah. Okay, that's fine. Right, thank you, Captain. I mean, it's from Turkey, so. I mean, our suspicions are aroused for heroin, really, more than anything else. Um, also, as we mentioned before, it's uh, cigarettes are cheap in Turkey, and it's also come uh, via Romania and Spain, which are also quite cheap for buying cigarettes. So there is, there is a chance that the crew might be tempted to smuggle large quantities of cigarettes. Uh, but what we're really after here is heroin. Investigation officers in Dover also work around the clock to stop organized criminal gangs bringing drugs into Britain. Back in July of 2004, uh, a vehicle was stopped at uh, the Eastern Docks of Dover, driven by a gentleman by the name of When his lorry was stopped and searched, uh, a couple of brown taped packages were found in the cab of his lorry. The packages were full of drugs. As a result of that, he was arrested. And that was how it all began. He was questioned about the drugs, while his truck was impounded and searched much to the annoyance of its owner. Well, Mr. would have been quite enthusiastic to get his trailer back anyway because he had a business to run, apparently. There had been one or two calls uh, uh, where he would uh, make inquiries as to when he could have his trailer back. And, uh, well, he was uh, overly enthusiastic, in my opinion. Alerted by his urgency to recover the truck, investigators began to dig into his background. had been convicted twice before in 1997 as part of a conspiracy to import uh, drugs within um, adapted exhausts in units, articulated units. At that point, uh, I sort of decided that perhaps we ought to look a bit deeper into the uh, either the unit or the trailer. Now knowing pedigree, the search wouldn't miss the clues a second time. In, in the side locker of the trailer, there was a box of, of grey bungs, uh, and they were sort of consistent with the, the bungs that were holding the mud guards over the wheels on the trailer. They found a strange tool which unlocked a secret compartment full of Class A drugs. Once uh, they finished the search, they removed uh, uh, a, a large number, of, a further large number of packages uh, uh, and uh, a significant quantity of cocaine and heroin amongst those packages. The elaborately engineered concealment fitted perfectly with previous attempts, and it was obvious why he'd been so keen to get his truck back. A team of specialist officers went to Liverpool to arrest and gather financial evidence, which would prove his lavish lifestyle could only be funded by drug dealing. So it's put to Mr. during the interview that he seemed to have a far better standard of living than the officer who interviewed him, who coincidentally was on the same money that was declared by and quite simply said, well, he didn't drink and he didn't smoke, and by making these savings, he could afford the extra three or four cars a year the big house, the luxury holidays. When interviewed, denied any knowledge of the attempted importation. His response to the drugs being found were that he had no idea they were in his trailer. Um, his response to the fact that the trailer had been adapted suggested to him that, in fact, it wasn't his trailer after all. It, uh, it must have been that switched the trailers, and in fact, his trailer had gone somewhere, disappeared. So uh, I set out to, to prove that the trailer did belong to him. But investigators found serial numbers on the recently replaced tires, which they traced to a supplier. They confirmed it was who'd paid for the tires, in cash. The game was surely up for but he wasn't ready to give in yet. He'd uh, pleaded not guilty uh, um, for, for some time, and... Uh, it was quite surprising that he had, bearing in mind the, the evidence that was gradually building up. Pleaded guilty on the day of the trial and was sentenced to 13 years in prison for attempting to import drugs worth over a million pounds. He was a very greedy man and he, he became complacent and he, he was caught. Meanwhile, back in Cornwall, no heroin has been found, but a search for cigarettes is underway. 
the Turkish crew are only allowed 200 cigarettes each whilst in UK waters. All other tobacco must be kept in a sealed store called the Bond. Right. Well then, boys, uh, as far as the crew themselves go, nobody has declared more than 200 cigarettes. Um, and only four people have any spirits at all. But what the crew declare isn't always the whole truth. And so the officers must search the entire ship for illegal goods, which might be destined for the local black market. Not surprisingly, the cabin searches reveal a few stray cigarettes. So it's OK so far. I mean, some of the crew have got a little bit extra, but uh, there's no point upsetting people just for uh, tiny quantities of cigarettes. But Woody also finds a stash in the ship's office and in the wheelhouse. The ship may not be as clean as first thought. Was the cigarettes that were there earlier on? These? OK. We've checked in here already. We've checked the chief officer's cabin. And the cigarettes that were up there have moved down here now, and they're moving things around to try and confuse us. Right, on this occasion, can you tell the chief I'll just take the cigarettes from him? Otherwise, we have these going ashore for, for business, yeah? And we, don't, we want no business in Foy. So we wouldn't usually take a small amount like that, but because he's been obstructive in trying to move the cigarettes around, and that's the reason I'm taking them from him. Well, we're just a bit concerned that there seems to be a lot of stray cigarettes around the vessel. Yes. Um, we found, like we said, 300 in the chat table, 300 in the office. Yeah. Are there any more cigarettes before we search the vessel any further now? I think no, Shay. Just sure. the one, please. No. no that's definitely no more cigarettes, no? No. If, if there are any more cigarettes now, this is an opportunity for you to ask the crew to bring the cigarettes to us now before we find them. If we find cigarettes now when we search, we will be, we, you know, we will have to work for them and we will be cross. Uh, and we will probably find find the vessel. Okay. okay. So a, this is a chance for you to come to yes. us now with any cigarettes, yeah? Okay. No, we don't have the more cigarettes. No more cigarettes. Okay, okay good. Thank you, Captain. Okay. But Woody then finds another 2,000 cigarettes in the captain's cabin, which will have to be seized. Yes. In one drawer, or four. Uh -huh. He stood in front of the next drawer. Uh -huh. I searched everywhere, waited for him to move, and opened the drawer he stood in front of. Opened the drawer, found the remainder. The embarrassed captain asks senior officer Colin for clemency. Could I take back the little bits? Because not enough our cigarettes for the Turkey from here. For that reason, could I take a little bit more cigarettes? You can buy the Turkey. 11 days. 11 yes. days trip. From here. There are two days here. Yeah. 13 days. Come, <laughs> sorry, but that's just... After, if, I say... If you come back to me. Yeah, kind of guessed that a bit. At Gatwick Airport, a flight has just touched down from Port of Spain in the Caribbean. UK border agency officers are out in force with the aid of drug detection dogs to stop illegal substances from being imported into the country. Just lower your bag, please, for the dog. While sniffer dogs assess the passenger's hand luggage, officers are on the lookout for behavioural indicators. Hello, sir. Good passport check. See your passport and ticket, please. Travelling with anybody else today? No. Thank you. What's the reason for your visit? Here on some other business too. What's what type of other business? Um, I'm in I'm out the market. Right. So we're looking for um, sourcing foreign use parts. Right. Because there are certain cars in Trinidad that parts are hard to come by, you know? yep. especially older European. Vehicles. Sniffer dog Jesse continues to check passengers coming off the flight. But the officer hasn't finished with the car mechanic just yet. This you know, is a customs controlled area. Uh, do you have anything to declare as customs today at all? Uh, well, I have my suitcase. Yeah, you've got your suitcase as well. Yeah. Are these your bags? Yeah. Did you pack them yourself? So you're fully aware of the contents? Has anybody asked you or forced you to bring anything into the country for them? No. You know, it's legal to bring in drugs, weapons, and things like that, yeah? Okay. And you know about your duty free allowances? Yeah. Cigarettes, oh, okay. Okay, so quick look through. Can you just take a step that way for me? Okay, thanks. 
Officers have a very short window of opportunity to stop drug smugglers coming into the country. Intuition is vital in stopping suspicious passengers. Feels like there's an area in here. I'm just gonna cut into that. Okay. Yeah. After tearing into the briefcase, it doesn't take long to make a significant discovery. Just found what I suspect to be cocaine there. So I'm resting you on suspicion of being involved in the importation of a controlled drug. So you don't have to say anything, it may harm your defence. If you don't mention when questioned, it's so much later on in court. Anything you do say may be given an evidence, do you understand? Mm -hmm. Okay. With the inner lining of the briefcase stuffed with a white powder, officers suspect they've intercepted a drug seizure worth thousands of pounds. Just turn this one. The passenger will now be detained and taken to the custody suite for further questioning. At Birmingham Airport, one of the daily flights from Dubai has just landed. As passengers collect their luggage from the reclaim area, Officer John is observing two men traveling together who separated as they came through immigration. Yeah, he's just, he just brought his stuff out. I thought he was on the moon. It's suspicious behavior. So John decides to stop the first of the passengers as he comes through the customs channels. Hello, sir. Where have you arrived from today, please? Dubai. Dubai. Can I just see your passport, please? Thank you. You're travelling by yourself today? Yeah, man. Yeah? Just been away for holiday? Yeah, just six days. How long were you away for? Six, seven days, man. Six, seven days? Yeah. Is it in family? Yeah, man. Yeah, what family have you got? Why ask? Oh, we could be stopped already, man. Yeah, and no, I'm just... Uh, fortunately, this, on, is, this, this is the way we do things. Yeah, yeah, okay, hold on, hold on. Yeah. No, no, don't, don't open it yet. No, yeah, but I need to ask the questions first. Oh God, so this man. is your bag, yeah? Yeah, this is my bag. Did you pack it yourself? Yes, yes. Are you aware of the contents yes, of the bag? Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Yes. Are you carrying anything for no, anyone else? No, 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 no. Okay, are you, are you aware that there's certain things you yes, can't bring yes, into England? Yes, 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 yes. Such as controlled drugs? Yes, man. Firearms? Yes. Weapons? Firearms, you know, are you mad? Weapons? Indecent obscene oh, material? Come on, man, just open the bag, man. I want to go, no, man. Listen, I'm asking the questions. Oh okay, man. are you aware of your allowances that you're allowed to bring in, such yes, as cigarettes man, and alcohol? Yes, So do you have anything to declare the customs? Nothing at all, man. Nothing at do all. Your thing, man. Okay, yeah, so the sooner I do this, the sooner we can all finish, okay? John becomes concerned by the man's aggressive nature and his claims that he's travelling alone. Hello. If you could just stay off your phone for me as well, please. Okay, you need to look what I'm doing and you need to cut the phone call, okay? You need to cut the phone call. You can't have phones in the area. Yeah, I'm relaxed, okay? And the sooner we get this done, the sooner you can be on your way. Okay? Excellent. I'm just wasting your time, man. Not wasting anyone's time. Yeah, put it on, help yourself. As the man becomes more and more erratic, John suspects he may have something to hide. There you go, I'm even folding them for you. Who's asking you to fold them? I don't, I'm just trying to be pleasant, aren't no I? One's asking if I, to if fold I'm them, pleasant, right? you can be pleasant. With every step of the search causing an argument, he may be here a long time. Okay then, I'll just leave it there for you, you can do what you like with it. At Gatwick, the man arrested on suspicion of smuggling cocaine in a briefcase has been brought over to the airport's custody suite. Having been caught red-handed, he started changing his story. When we took him to his cell, we said that uh, the satchel was handed to him by somebody else at the airport. He was asked to bring that through, so this isn't his case. But then he already told me that it was his earlier on. Um, we made the arrest because we found a package inside, um, which is in the front here, in the front wall, and in the back wall. Um, earlier on, I cut into the front one. So what I'll do now is just remove some of that white powder from my knife. Just goes blue. Oh, nice. Yep, there we go. So it's gone blue. So that's positive. That should be cocaine. With their suspicions confirmed. The drugs in the briefcase will now be assessed and weighed before the passenger's story is formally investigated. Um, there was only five envelopes in there. 
Um, and now I've taken those out, it's still quite heavy. You can feel that the walls are quite wide. There's no need for them to be that wide. You can feel that there's something in there, front and back. The back section is quite well done though. With regards to stitching, you can't really see anything wrong with the stitching. It's just literally how thick it is. The courier himself, I don't know how much money he would have got. Maybe uh, a thousand, two thousand pounds perhaps. Um, but then the risk of getting caught, you know, losing out on all the money. Um, it's quite high as well. The briefcase was found to be carrying over two and a half kilos of cocaine with a value of more than £125,000. In Birmingham, Officer John is still searching the bags of the man who seems to have left his manners in Dubai. What's in here? Nothing much. Tell me what it is. Flavoured. Say again? The man is being deliberately vague about his tub containing shisha tobacco. So what do you do? Do you eat it or drink it or you chew it? For flights outside the EU, passengers are allowed to carry just 250 grams of loose tobacco. The tub is four times the allowance. So what is it like? Uh, sugar or tobacco? But it's only one, isn't it? I'm allowed to carry one. Yeah, I just wanted one else. I've never yeah, seen it's it before. It's only one. I'm only carrying okay, one. Okay, I'm just going to leave it there for a second. That's it, mate. Nothing else? No, nothing else. Really. You got anything I'm in your good. pockets there? No, nah, you want to search me? Where are the pieces of search? You want to search me again? No, well, I, want to, I was asking you about your, your jeans pockets, that's all. But despite his assurances that he's carrying nothing else, a further item is found in his suitcase. Hey, what's that in there? That's probably um, a girl's thing, isn't it? I brought it back from a girl. So it must be. What do you think it is? I don't know, that's what I'm asking you. With the man being evasive, John suspects he may have discovered an illegal substance. Okay. Just don't oh, say right, anything, man. okay? Those tampax, man, what the girls want for their periods, man. Okay, just like I say. You guys getting excited for no reason, you know? Just calm Don't me. get excited, man. Look, am I, am I getting. control drug. Do I look excited? Get out of here, man. About this. Yeah, that's cocaine, isn't it? Isn't it? That's, that's, cocaine. that's what I can check, isn't that's it? Cocaine, that's what I can it? check, okay? That's not cocaine, so I'm just going to go and check. So you stay here with this officer, All right. okay? Keep calm and we'll be back out. A sanitary towel is taken away to see if it's concealing drugs. Meanwhile, officers have intercepted the passenger's suspected travelling companion and confiscated more than 12 kilograms of loose tobacco. Do you still want to complain, yeah? The results on the sanitary towel show no traces of drugs. I don't give it to me, man. It's cocaine in it. You keep it for, for souvenir side. Officers suspect the man's performance may have been an unsuccessful distraction tactic to prevent his travelling companion from being stopped. Just the type of character he was. Some people just don't like dealing with officials, and, and he was one of those. There you go, sir. Thanks very much. Have a nice day. Coming up. It's come up as positive for contact with cocaine. Is there an unsuspecting drug mule at Gatwick? And she said one comment that got me a bit interested. She said, Oh God, I hope he hasn't put anything in my bag. Coming up, smugglers go bust in Bristol. All right, well, I'll tell you the allowance is 200 cigarettes. 200? That's what you'd like to bring back. So I take it that you've got an excess of your allowance? Yeah, I have that. Gatwick is the second largest airport in the UK. And numerous flights land from the Caribbean every day. Slow this one a little bit. Yes, sir. Thank you. Officers are observing passengers from a Trinidad and Tobago flight. And sniffer dog Lucy is using her sensitive nose to search for traces of drugs. A lone female passenger has caught the eye of officers. So she's pulled over in the customs channels to answer a few questions about her visit to the Caribbean. 
Do you know anybody out in Trinidad and Tobago? Do you have friends out there? Well, this is a friend there in Tobago. Oh, right, okay. So you stayed with him or her? Yeah. Is it a lady or a man? It's a man. A man, okay. Right. Okay, so you've come back. These are all your bags. Are they this and this here? You know everything that's in these bags. You pack them yourself. Do you know it's but the woman starts to get upset because she's already had her bags searched in Trinidad and Tobago. Did you pay for your trip yourself? My friend paid for Oh, your friend who lives out there, is it? Okay. And I don't think he's a drug dealer. Okay. Officer John is immediately alarmed by the woman's last comment. Do you use drugs or anything, or does your friend use drugs as far as you're aware? What do you mean drugs? Class A, what we call Class A. Cocaine, heroin. I've never used any drugs. That's great. Life. Thank you for letting me know. A swab test is carried out on the woman's suitcase. Okay, let me one moment. The test will show whether the woman has come into contact with any drugs on her visit to the Caribbean. come up as positive for contact with cocaine. So I'll ask the lady now she can explain why that would be in her case. I'll just ask her a few more questions now. Okay, madam, that machine test has come up positive for contact with cocaine. Is there any reason, as I say, ask again, do you use cocaine or does your friend use cocaine as far as you're aware? The woman gets tearful, which raises John's suspicions even further. But you don't use it, you're certain about that? No. Okay. Well, because of that, I means I do need to have a turn it out and have a quick look inside it, okay? Don't worry, don't get upset. Don't worry. They put something in my bag. Well, let's see. How long have you known your friend? Not very long. Okay. And how do you know him? Because From I met where? I him in London. He lived in London. And he just moved there with a business and he looks like he's really having a business and he's a respectable person. I don't know. Okay. Clearly, the woman doesn't know her male friend very well. John has further doubts about her story. Has he forced you to bring anything here? No. Are you sure? Because now's the time to let me know. He hasn't, he hasn't given me anything. Like, he hasn't told me anything to carry with him for him. Right, just have a quick scan through the x-ray. It's just at the end of the hall there, so if you just wait for me and have a look what I'm doing, can you just stay there? She's tearful and she seems quite nervous. And she said one comment that got me a bit interested. She said, oh God, I hope he hasn't put anything in my bag, which is an odd thing for somebody to say. The x-ray of the bag will show if the woman knows more than she's letting on. At Bristol Airport, holidaymakers have just arrived home from Fuerteventura. Although the Canary Islands are part of the European Union, passengers are strictly limited to bringing back no more than 200 cigarettes. A lone female passenger in a blue top has been observed acting nervously. Border agency officers decide to stop her as she passes through the customs channels. Hello, madam. Where have you just come from? Portuguese. Portuguese. Just have a quick chat for a second. Are you travelling on your own? Yes. Yes. Where are you going back to now? Is this all your luggage? Yes. You packed it yourself? Yes. Are you carrying anything for anybody else? No. 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 Okay. You come down the green. Nothing to declare, challenge. Do you yes. understand what your allowances are? About three, but you know. All right. Well, I'll tell you the allowance is two hundred cigarettes. Two hundred. That's what you're allowed to bring back. I thought you bring the right back. No, no, to Spain. You, no, no. It's Spain. You can. If we're to ensure it's not mainland Spain and is outside of the EU for tax purposes. Right. So you can only bring up 200 cigarettes or 250 grams of tobacco. So I take it that you've got in excess of your allowance? Yeah, I have been, yeah. Okay. The woman admits exceeding her allowance, but Officer Mark wants to see how many cigarettes she's carrying. So do you actually know how many cigarettes you have all together or are you not sure? I don't know whether you have all the time on the way out, because you can't always get still packed. And no. I'm not sure whether they've still got any of them left. Well, anything you buy on its way, it loses its identity anyway, so it, it counts towards your allowance when you come back in again. With over 800 cigarettes in her hand luggage, the woman's naivety towards the restrictions doesn't convince. Uh, to be honest, I suppose you haven't brought back any cigarettes for ages, you know? I think that's the real fault. Have you got your, um, your passport on you there, please? The suitcase is searched for any remaining cigarettes. 
Thank you very much. If you just bear with me a second, I'm just going to do a couple of checks, OK? Uh, you can put the clothing back in if you want to, but not the cigarettes. So I'll be back in a second. Mark is pulled aside by a colleague searching another passenger. Suspiciously, her cigarettes are almost identical. Odd. Where are you going back to now? Home. Yeah, kind of guessed that a bit. Where's home? Um, same area. There's a whole crowd of women traveling together. Oh, this right. lady says the bag doesn't belong to her. She's going to tell me that it's Probably, yeah, it's the same area. Officers are starting to think there's a link between the passengers, but we'll have to investigate further. In Gatwick, a woman's suitcase is being x-rayed after it tested positive for the presence of cocaine. The case doesn't appear to have any concealments in it. It's very light. Nothing is found hidden in the suitcase, but Officer John isn't finished with the woman yet. How come my dad is a well, that's, that's what's intrigued me. That's what's intrigued me. The mystery behind the high cocaine trace means the search is taken to the next level. Now, as I say, I've had a look in your bag. I'm satisfied there's nothing in there. I'm quite happy about that. But sometimes people do bring in drugs on their body or inside their body. And what I'd like to do is to do a search, check, these, my female colleague's going to do that, just to check to see that you're not carrying anything on your body. It's because of the high reading and because of where you've come from, that's my concerns, OK? Despite the woman's tears, she's led away to have a strip search. Right, if you just want to take a seat for a minute, because I've just got some forms and stuff to fill out, all right? The woman's shoes are also taken away to be swab tested. Positive traces of drugs found from this test often suggest that the passenger is carrying drugs inside their body. So it's quite a low reading for cocaine on the shoe, not a, anywhere near what was in the bag. And where she's come from, Trinidad and Tobago, then that maybe isn't an unreasonable background contamination. Nothing is found during the strip search, and John is happy she's not carrying anything illegal. Thank you very much for your patience with us, all right? We're happy there that um, you've got nothing, so you're free to go on your way as soon as you're ready. Thank you. The strip search is very invasive. We wouldn't do that for no reason whatsoever. That's quite a big thing, and obviously she was quite upset by that. We're not going to do a body scan unless it actually is justified, and in this instance, that wasn't warranted, so we didn't proceed to that. And I believe that she didn't have any prohibited or restricted goods on her this morning. Back in Bristol, an investigation is underway into whether two suspected cigarette smugglers are linked. That lady down there, yeah. is that bag that she's carrying yours? No. It's not yours? No, it's not. And you say you're travelling on your own, yeah, are you? Yeah, I am. We know each other. I've oh, you, you do know her? Well, by sight sort of thing, you know, not one holiday with her. All right, then, if you just bear with me anyway, just okay. a few checks to do. Officer Mark goes to check whether the woman has a history of smuggling goods. So it was last year, Cardiff Airport, and 2006, so it must have been it's again from... The database reveals the woman has had goods seized on more than one occasion. Have you ever had problems with customs or border controls before? You've had goods taken before? Seized? Yeah. You have? Yeah. Okay, where was that or when was that? Um, yeah. Here? Oh, in Bristol, yeah. here. Okay. But you don't know. You don't know how long ago? No, Roughly? No, I don't. I just haven't bought any duty-free back for a long time. But you're good since last year. Last year? Yeah, at Cardiff Airport. Two thousand cigarettes. Was it only last year? It was yes. Well, and at the done. time you had two thousand cigarettes seized, so you must have known what the allowances were. You must yeah, have been I've quite been why you taking my cigarettes from I've me. I've been told that it's been, um, you know, that it's been changed now. And now who now. told you that? Well, the people out there that we, you know, can buy cigarettes from the shops. Do you don't think they might have told old. you that to sort of sell you more yeah, cigarettes, probably, perhaps? Probably. But, um, I mean, I know it's a relatively small amount, but obviously you are six times over the uh, over the limit. So. Uh... Whatever the truth, the woman is having her cigarettes seized yet again. 
I mean, I'm not saying it's a huge amount of cigarettes, but at the end of the day, she's got six times what is the allowance, and she's a previous offender. OK, those receipts from what I've had to take from you. Uh, and don't listen to what the people tell you in the shops. It's, uh... All right, then. Thank you for your time, anyway. Sure you. She knew the lady at the end down there, but said that she wasn't troubling with her. And it, it begs the question, are they all troubling together and do all the goods belong to one person? But it, it doesn't matter because we've, we've seized the goods anyway. The passenger found with two and a half kilos of cocaine in his briefcase pleaded guilty and was sentenced to seven years in prison.